What's up everybody? Welcome back to my kitchen and thank y'all for coming to checking out and see what Billy be cooking today. Uh, today, as you can see, we have some beautiful ribeye steaks, uh, about an inch thick, inch and an eighth thick. Um, I got some pretty good marbling in there. As you can see, the, the little fat vein looking things going through it. Uh, the more of that, the more tender your steak's going to be. And today we're gonna uh, we're gonna cook them the same way, but we're gonna finish them separately. Um, how we're gonna cook them is we're gonna sous vide them today. I don't know if you heard about sous vide, but what it is basically is just uh, this little gadget right here. Uh, it's digital, you know, and you fill your pot up with water, you vacuum seal the steaks in these vacuum seal bags. You got the vacuum sealer right here. You fill this up with water. And then this digital thermometer, you can set the temperature uh, to the perfect temperature, right? Um, and then you fill it up with water, you put your vacuum sealed steaks in there, and for about an hour, you do about an hour to a pound of steak, right? So um, we're gonna cook it in the sous vide to about 125 degrees. And that'll be almost medium rare, right? That's what we want, medium rare. And when we take them out, uh, one, I'm going to be pan searing to get the sear on the outside. We're going to do that in the cast iron. And the other one, we're going to take outside and we're going to use this bad boy, the food torch. Now, I don't want to do it in here. It's a small apartment, but this is, this is fun. You'll see when we get outside. Uh, but for right now, we're just going to go ahead and uh, season these steaks real quick before we put them in the bag. And we're just going to go with a uh, trusty... Salt, pepper, garlic. Nothing fancy, and these are big cuts of meat, so it can take a lot. It can take a lot of seasoning. Yeah. Don't worry, but you can't oversalt these big things. Then uh, some pepper, good ground pepper. Make sure you cut it good now, because like I said, these are good thick chunks of meat, so it can take a lot of seasoning. Well, I can smell that fresh pepper now. Mm. And then uh, your garlic, just uh, you know, sprinkle it liberally. It'll cover everything. All right, pat that down. So I got the Michael Jackson glove on. Go ahead and pat, pat that down, get it up in there really good. Cause we're gonna flip it over to the other side and you don't want this, this falling off cause you don't wanna waste anything, all right? All right, good thick chunks of meat. And I ain't had steak in a minute, so this is gonna be delicious. I got a good coarse flake salt, which with this grinder you can set it to whatever size flakes you want, but you don't have to do that. And I know, I know those other cooks out there watching me do this, like, but well, Billy, you gotta get the sides. Uh, well, damn it, hold on. But they're all right. You wanna, you wanna season up everything, the sides, both both sides, and the end. You'll see. Get that good seasoning on there. Yes. Well, it's looking pretty already. These things are lucky. I don't eat raw meat. But. All right. Garlic it too. End to end. Make sure you cover everything. I hate people who try to put butter or mayonnaise on the bread and they don't get the, they don't cover the, all the edges and everything. I get everything. All right, so. Oh, and while I'm doing this too, here's a little tip I learned about yesterday. Um, you know, you can toast your bread in, in an oven quick. Uh, sometimes a lot quicker than a toaster too, right? Uh, you toast it in the oven, 
Just raise your rack up to the top, turn it on broil, and uh, you know, put your butter or whatever on your toast, put it in there to broil, it hits it hard and fast. And then you flip it, it'll hit the backside too. But be careful, this is the lesson I learned. Everybody knows how to do bread like that. The lesson I learned, uh, don't reach in there too fast, because you think you're gonna burn it and catch two fingers on the top broiler, and it's not nice. So, from me to you, you're welcome. All right, so now we got those, and here you go, chefs. With this excess, you're gonna roll your sides. Get everything coated. Yes, sir. Now that we're getting this all seasoned up and pretty, then we're gonna put it in the refrigerator for about an hour. And it's gonna let that salt pull the rest of the moisture out of these steaks. And then it'll suck it right back in. It's weird, science. I don't know how it works. I'm not a Scientologist, <laughs> scientist, but it works wonderful. And then just set these in your refrigerator. Like I said, about an hour, hour minimum. You kind of want to go three or four hours. Some people go 24 hours. I ain't going that crazy. Um, but uh, I'm going to put these in the refrigerator and we'll be right back. All right, so we're back. Uh, the steaks have been chilling in the refrigerator for, like I said, around an hour. This is like the salt work its magic. Um, and what we're going to do now is uh, I've already sealed one end of the bags, because they come on a roll, so you can just cut however long you need them, right? I've already sealed the bag. I double seal them, because just in case one seal busts, you know. Um, and let me clarify too, I don't think I said this earlier, uh, or said it right. When you set the sous vide machine to the temperature you want, um, a good medium rare steak is around 132 to 135 degrees. Right. You don't want to set your sous vide machine to exactly medium rare because after you take it out, then you got to get the sear on the outside, right? And if you got it to the perfect medium rare and then you go to sear it in a cast iron, it's going to cook a little bit more and you won't get the medium rare you want. So that's why I'm going to do these about 125. All right. I'm going to sous vide these 125 and when we take them out, uh, you'll see. All right. So now, um, we'll go ahead and put them in the bag. Got my Michael Jackson glove back on. Okay. And fold the ends of the bag over. That way if your steak touches once you fold it over, it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna matter. It's not gonna get on the ends of your bag. So when you seal it again, you don't want steak juices getting and messing up your vacuum sealer. It might sound like it's a lot. It's not really that complicated once you do it a couple times. Uh, you get used to it. All right, so I got some, uh, I got some time also. I'm gonna set some time on top of these and on the bottom. Cause you'll see as we vacuum seal it. Oh, these are nice. It's gonna seep into the meat. That should be good. Let's set it right on top. Then flip it over and do another one on top of that. sous vide set up, bring it up to temperature, and we'll be right back. Alright, so I brought the water up to temp, so now this water is 125 degrees, and just hit start. So now it's set for an hour. I got my steaks vacuum sealed with the time on either side. Just easy as that, put them, put them in the water. 
and sometimes they might want to float on you. Here's where the fun part. Oh, oh, another thing, 125 degree water is a little hot, but it ain't going to scorch you. You know what I mean? Don't worry about that part. Another fun thing, if these bags start to uh, float, check this out. This is fun. This is probably my favorite toy. There's chain mail weight thing, right? This is made of chain mail. And it's made for sous vide. And you can just drape it right over the stakes in the water. And it holds them down. Keeps them from floating to the top. And your timer lets you know when they're done. Cook for an hour. Best thing about sous vide, let's say I leave now. I forgot to get something at the grocery store. I can leave right now. And if I get stopped by the police or something, something happens, I don't come back for another two, three hours. Uh, it's still the same exact temperature at 125. It don't matter how long you leave it in there. Now, if you leave it in like six hours or more, it's going to start to mess with the metabolism of the meat. The metabolism. It's going to start to mess with the proteins and stuff in the meat and make it more softer or mushy or whatever. We're talking six, eight hours or something. But an hour, if I left this for two hours, two and a half hours, it's still just as good as when I take it out in an hour. So don't, don't worry about it. You're not going to overcook it. Uh, we're going to leave this going, like I said, for an hour. And then uh, when we take it out, we're going to pan sear one of them. The other one, <laughs> we get to use my buddy. So uh, give me 58 minutes and we'll see you a little bit. All right, welcome back everybody. Uh, so our sous vide machine has uh, went to, well when you turn it off it automatically goes to 133. Anyway, uh, so we're at 125 for an hour. We can go ahead and unplug this and turn it off. Okay, and uh, we take our steaks out of there. This amazing fun toy. If <laughs> you get one of these, you can't stop playing with it. It's just fun. Like I said, it's uh, a <clears throat> it's actual chain mail. It's what they used to wear back in the 1600s or whatever, the knights and the round tables and all that. So that's fun. All right, so we'll take our first steak out. And what we're going to do with this one, this one we're going to pan sear it. And uh, I got the pan started to warm up. What we want to do is first, go ahead and cut this open. Take it out of here. And uh, oh, we want to dry it completely as much as possible. Because the drier your meat is, when you go to sear it, the better sear you'll get. Uh, you won't get a good sear with wet meat. It'll just, uh, go ahead and take that. Uh, if you have wet meat, when you try to sear it, it'll just boil the water in between the meat and the pan. There's a science to it, if you research. Go ahead and take that time. Take the time, take the time off, you don't need it. Right now, go ahead and dry your meat. All right, now we're getting the, getting the pan good and hot. And I'm using a, uh, a sesame oil. It's got a pretty good smoke point. Um, Then, also, what I'm going to do, bear with me a moment here. I will do it with this. Get rid of that. <clears throat> I'm going to use some uh, avocado oil. And it looks like we're out of avocado oil. It's all right. That's good enough. We got plenty. 
what we're going to do when we dry the steak, well, as you're drying it, you can feel the tenderness of it. It's, it's hard to explain. You just have to feel it. But, uh, once we get that good and dried off, Look at that, look at how the fat's pulling apart. You can already tell it's tender. Uh, we're gonna take some of this oil and just drizzle it over the top, because that's gonna help it sear also. Just try to get it all around the sides and everything. All right, we're gonna take this and uh, let this a little get warm. It's getting hot. We're going to go about 360, 375 on the heat. Nothing too crazy. And all the science you've ever heard about people. Oh, if you get it to five, 600 degrees, it's going to sear. Yeah, you know, it's, it's going to sear the same. You're just going to end up burning. So, go ahead and put this in there. Uh, you hear that noise? That's delicious. And then we want it to sear completely. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take a spatula just because it's going to cover it. And I found this, <laughs> I found this lamp, right? It's a genie lamp. You're like, oh, really? That looks like a water bomb. It's not a water bomb. It's a genie lamp. When I found it, I found it in the trash can in the alley. I gave it a good, you know, rubbed off all the dirt or whatever. And freaking Sinbad popped out. It was crazy. He's a real genie. And you're like, oh, well, there's a noggle on the end of it. That is a water bar. No, it's not. That's his ring doorbell candy. So, you're going to let this simmer. Or simmer. You're going to let this sear for about two, three minutes, right? We'll go off for two because it's been on for one. Then, the other steak we got in right here, this is the one we're going to use this bad boy for it and i'm going to take you outside we're going to do this so first off let's do this one here and uh give me just a second and uh like i said i'm gonna let this go for about two three minutes we're gonna flip it and then i'll show you what happens all right so we flipped the meat over here on the skillet i'm just getting the bottom side of it like I said, that's a ring doorbell camera for the genie. Don't worry about that. Uh, you want to make sure that you press it down, though. That way, the whole steak gets... Look at that crust, everybody. Look at that beautiful crust from the first side before we flipped it. Look at that. That's beautiful. And you just want to make sure you seal everything at one time. Seal everything at one time. And, uh, you know, you do it about two, three minutes. What we're going to do at this point is uh, we're going to add some butter and some herbs. Go ahead and turn that down. It's already been on about two minutes. And turn the heat down. You know, turn the heat down because we're going to add butter, thyme, and some garlic to this to this pan. We got butter, thyme, and garlic, and we don't want to burn the butter, so we're going to let it cool for a little bit. It's already seared on the other side, so we're not worried about that part. We're just going to baste it with some butter and thyme and garlic. It's going to be beautiful. Give me just a second. We'll be right back. All right, get your garlic, and uh, I'm doing uh, two big cloves of garlic, right? And all we're going to do is we're just going to smash it. Just smash the garlic. There you go. That way it gets it good and uh, smashed. And we're going to take this butter. The smaller. You chop up the butter. The quicker it's going to melt. Show. We're going to put it back on the heat. We turn the heat down. Right. 
And then we're going to put our garlic in there. Our smashed garlic. And then we got the Uh, then we got the thyme. Uh, give me some thyme. Hold on. And put the thyme in there. Come on. And we're just going to baste. We're going to baste it. And that's going to make it beautiful. Get everything incorporated. Make sure your butter's melting, make sure your garlic's in there, and thyme, and get some heat on there. You just want to infuse the garlic in the butter. And just take the juice. And just baste. Just baste it all over. Look how beautiful that is. See the color of that butter and the oil? Oh my gosh. That's delicious. And then the garlic is infusing with the hot oil. This is an amazing steak. I wish... I wish I had somebody over here to eat this. They can put this in their mouth and like, Billy, you know what? This is amazing. All right, so that's, uh, that looks delicious right there. Let me show you the sear on the other side. All right, now this one here is pretty much mostly wrapped up. Uh, with a sous vide steak, go ahead and turn that off. With a sous vide steak, you don't have to worry about letting it rest because it's not like you you cooked it cold from the pan up and then the heat comes from the bottom of the steak up through the steak. Sous vide, it cooks the steak all the way around at the same temperature, so you don't have to you don't have to worry about letting it rest. As soon as you take it off, you can pretty much cut it. Delicious. This is gonna be delicious. And why not? Let me base the other side. Just cause, just cause. I got extra juice. You don't want to waste that juice. All right, this is good to go. We're gonna take this off. Beautiful. All right, so for the torch method, uh, we're gonna basically do most of the same stuff in the beginning. This thing is made for cutting chickens open, not bags, so I apologize. Bear with me. All right, so got a bag open, and we're gonna take our steak out of here. Take that time off. Ain't nobody got time for that. Okay. And then, like I said, get it dry as you can. This is a beautiful steak in itself. Goodness great. Look at it trying to fall apart. I ain't going to let you. I ain't going to let you fall apart. Get that good and dry. Oh man, it's so spongy. Like, you know it's just cooked to the right, perfect temperature. Look at that beautiful steak, everybody. Look at that. Well, it's not that beautiful, but it's gonna be that delicious. Just trying to fall apart. Now, on this one too, we're going to uh, baste, uh, we're just gonna, not baste, we're gonna put some, uh, rub it in oil. Right, because the oil is what's going to give it that catalyst for the heat. It's going to give it an awesome sear. 
Make sure you get both sides pretty good. Uh, the season is the salt, pepper, garlic's already infused in the meat. So get both sides garlic up or <laughs> got oiled up. Man, I can't wait to taste test these steaks, y'all. All right, so now we got the oiled up. Now let's let's have some fun. Let's go outside. All right, so we're outside. And now we're gonna hit it with the torch. There we go. So this is uh, basically based in the butter into your steak the sear way or a torch way if you will. pan seared and our torch seared steaks and let's cut into them and see what we're looking like show uh, it looks like as far as the pan seared I might have should have done it well, I don't know this thing is feeling look how flimsy and floppy that is that's that's pretty good there look you get a sink to bend like that that's tender but the color of the torch seared oh my gosh so that might be the best way right there y'all then again uh it's all about the taste test, right? So let's take a look here. Let me get this out of y'all's way. All right, so first we'll go with the pan seed. Like I said, it's, it's not a pretty color that I'd like, but it still feels so soft. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. So, so it does got a little pull to it. Like I said, I might have, if I'm in a pan sear, then I should have sous vide at 120 instead of 125. That would have helped the carry over temperature a little bit better. Kept it a little more medium rare than I was looking for. Now let's see about the, uh, the torch method. Like I said, it's a, it's a more beautiful color. There's some more red that I like in there and Look at that juice just hanging around. Mm. 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 
the pa <coughs> excuse me, the pants here. Don't get me wrong, it's a great, it's a great flavor. You know, it's still got the garlic and herbs, but the torch method, it doesn't cook it more internally after it's already sous vide. You just get a good, beautiful crust on the outside. Look at that, and uh, you get more of a medium rare cut in there as opposed to the pan sear method. Like I said, it just took a little bit longer to get the crust on it, so I cooked it more internally. It's still good and soft. It's still good and soft, but it's not as, to me, as good as the torch method. So, mm. try that. Tell me what you think. Uh, the torch, I probably got this, and it doesn't come with a canister. You can buy those at Ace Hardware or whatever. The torch itself, maybe 20 bucks. Amazon, maybe 20 bucks. Um, the sous vide machine, where you at, buddy? It just, like I said, it just, it just clamps on whatever pot you have. This may be 80, 85 bucks, but it makes the best steak you've ever had. You can't go wrong. Unless you over pants here like I did, but you get the point of that. Clamp it on the any pot is great. Try this. Tell me what you think. Um, I'll be doing some more experiments and stuff. I got some umami powder that I'm going to marinate my steaks in. That's a whole nother level, but that's for another time. But thank you so much for coming back to my kitchen and seeing what Billy B's cooking. Uh, today we got some beautiful steaks, y'all. And I don't think anybody would be upset with either one of these. Uh, try my recipe. Tell me what you think. Leave me some comments down below. And please like and subscribe because that's going to help me out a lot. And put some suggestions in the comment box. Let me know what you want to see me cook next. Um, if not, I'm going to just be guessing on what you like. And I hope you like it. Thank you all for coming again. I love you all. See you soon.